everybody, Lady Towers here. For those of you who have only met me at conventions, this is what my muggle clothing looks like, so I apologize if I look a little strange. Um, but I'm here today because, as you know, or well, as you may know, uh, Lord Lady Towers, uh, we travel around, we do different events, steampunk, uh, cosplay, gothic, cyberpunk, we do kind of a lot of everything. But one of the biggest panels that we present at different events is how to steampunk on a budget. And we've been to a couple where um, people say things like, oh, go to, you know, this or that or do this or that. But there's not a lot of direct um, opportunities for us to actually demonstrate. So what I'm going to do is do a series of videos uh, up here and on YouTube and on TikTok uh, that are going to show how to actually do the things we talk about in our panels. And so today, for our first lesson, is going to be how to dissect a fitted sheet. So for those of you who have been to our panels, and those of you who haven't, um, one of the things that we talk a lot about is finding things for free if you can. So for example, here in town, we have a thrift store that uh, gives things away for free and uh, things they can't sell. So if, you know, a fitted sheet or a flat sheet comes in and it's got like a small tear in it somewhere, they can't sell that, although they appreciate the donation, they can't sell it. So they have a little box out front of free stuff. And I'll be honest, I get a home, <laughs> my muggle struggle work every day and I drive by and I see what's free. So. Uh, this was actually a fitted sheet that was for free. So if you can find things for free, that's preferable. But even if you can't, a fitted sheet at a thrift store uh, can be real cheap, like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. I think the, the most expensive one I've seen is five dollars if it's practically brand new. Um, so it's a great resource for lots of fabric for cheap. But many people are apprehensive of getting fitted sheets because they don't know how to properly deconstruct this to utilize the most fabric. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to deconstruct it and then we're going to actually turn it into a kind of ruffly pirate shirt. So, you know, something that you could use for steampunk if you wanted to have like ruffles, but it could also be like for pirate or cosplay um, or just for fun, for Halloween maybe, who knows? Um, or everyday wear. Well, let's be honest. Um, so, yep, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to turn this, I'm going to show you how to deconstruct this fitted sheet and turn it into something fun. So what many of you are going to notice right off the bat is that with a fitted sheet, it's not flat. You have elastic. So there are two different types of fitted sheets, generally speaking. And, <laughs> and I say this as someone who dissects them a lot but also as someone who works in hospitality and has to deal, deal with fitted sheets every day. Um, so most fitted sheets, nice fitted sheets that aren't hospitality fitted sheets, like the kind you find at a hotel or at a hospital, have elastic that goes all the way around. That's kind of how you can tell if a fitted sheet is a nice quality one because they don't skimp on the elastic. Sometimes you will find some though, let me find a corner. Sometimes you will find some though that only have elastic that goes just from the corner around the short side. If you're working in hospitality or if you buy cheap fitted sheets, that's uh, an easy way for you to tell where the end is, you know, the, the bottom of the bed is by looking for the elastic. And that's kind of why they do it that way. It also saves some money, but but on a good quality fitted sheet like this one, you'll have elastic that runs the entire way. Now I've seen people cut the elastic and just throw it away. But I tell you this as a friend, <laughs> this is good elastic. And especially if you got something for free, um, like I did with this, uh, you are going to want to scavenge it. It's free elastic. Now, if you run your hand along this, this one has free floating elastic. Some, some of them don't. This one has free floating, which means that the elastic is only tethered in one spot. And I can tell you that one spot is right here because you'll be able to feel, at least I think it is, you'll be able to feel a little bit of an overlay 
where it's a little bit of a thicker spot. And you'll notice if you pull, it doesn't pull away from this section. You know, like it doesn't pull in both directions. See how that pulls in both directions? Uh, where'd it go? This does not. It only pulls from a spot. So I might be wrong, but let's test my theory. If I am wrong, it doesn't matter. So what you can do, it also has to be right at a corner. So that helps. So what you can do is you just take your, your scissors. I use these, uh, which were a gift to me, but any scissors work. Don't let people fool you. I mean, these are another pair I have, but you can use um, pretty much any type of scissors for fabric sewing. It just the higher the quality scissors, the easier it is on the fabric, but we're being on a budget. So you don't have to have fancy scissors like this. But I'm going to cut right here. We're right only through the elastic. So as you see, the little hem right here, the little tube now has the little elastic showing. At least I hope you can see that. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Oops. I've lost it through there. But that actually brings me to a good point. So if I pull this, let's see. Oh, I was wrong. But if you pull, you can pull the elastic straight out. So I'm going to keep pulling, keep pulling. Oh, looks like maybe I have found. No. So essentially you're just de-elasticizing de it. So you say, Ashley, why? Why would I want to do this? Make a big old mess. You can also do it the opposite direction by just pushing the elastic through, stretching it out. Now, if you get it stuck, kind of like I'm at at this point, oh, oh, no, still some elastic in there. Um, if you get it stuck like I have it at this point, you can come down a little bit farther. Must be. Uh, there we go. You can come down a little bit farther once you got a decent length. So I've got like a pretty, I don't know, 18 inches. Um, so I'm going to come down here a little bit farther on. And I'm going to snip. Just like I did before. Hopefully the, hopefully the camera caught that. And there. I got one section of elastic. So then I'm going to come over here. And just kind of maneuver the elastic out of that section. You can feel with your fingers. So like this is, this feels hollow. So I know there's no elastic in it. But if I come over here, I can feel where it's a little thicker. So that means that's where the elastic is. I make another little, uh-huh, see, that's right. And if you do this a lot, you'll you'll start to get a feeling for where the elastic is. And this process can take a little bit of time. I'm not gonna lie, and <laughs> but if you're trying to cosplay on a budget, if you don't have a lot of money, or honestly, if you just don't want to spend a lot of money on something. This is a great way to do it. And the other thing I'm going to say is that whenever you try something new, whether it's stripping a fitted sheet or sewing something or, oh, who knows, everything new you try, you're going to, you're going to absolutely be garbage at the first couple times you try it. That is absolutely normal, perfectly acceptable and to be expected. So don't feel like you have to be Picasso the first time you pick up a paintbrush or that you have to sew like an amazing seamstress the first time you sew something. Um, and I'll tell you, as someone who sews all the time, I still make lots of dumb mistakes. <laughs> Kick myself every time. I'm like, man. Why did I do that? But it's because we're human. So a lot of what you're going to struggle against is the 
what I could like to call the friction in the system, which is where um, there's a friction buildup between the elastic and the inside of the, the casing. And if you pull frequently enough, you'll start to notice that it gets, it gets warm because there's a lot of friction at the end. At the end. Okay, now we're, well, now we're cooking with gas. Okay. Um, so yeah, you'll notice that it's going to get a little hot. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm pulling this. So I pull and it bunches the fabric up farther down the elastic. And all of this work is just so I can save the elastic. <laughs> but elastic's expensive, so we're going to save it for another project. Or we could even use it on this one if we wanted to. We'll see. So as I bunch it up, then I have to release it down the line so that the bunching increases the friction, makes it hard for the elastic. So I pull until it's too bunched up, and then I hold on to this. Go down the line and release the munching. And as I do this, the elastic, which is right there, the end of the elastic gets farther along. So as I, I pull and I pull. Now, if, if this is like a twin or a baby crib fitted sheet, you probably won't have to do this much work because the elastic won't be as uh, much of a stickler. But for this situation, since I think this is a queen, I need to be a king. King size fitted sheets or flat sheets. Ooh, you can get some good stuff out of that. On average, I try really hard to spend less than 30 or 40 bucks for an outfit. <clears throat> and, I, and I say that including that I wear a hoop, hoop dress, you know, hoop skirt. With a petticoat and a crinoline <laughs> a shirt and a corset and all kinds of stuff so um and probably the most expensive thing i wear if we're not including my hat um is my crinoline which is about 25 dollars. all right there we go and see we got all of it i'll see this one was not a tacked down one it was sewn together all right but look at all that elastic that can be used for something else. We got a little bit over here. So these are uh, bits that I keep. Uh, maybe we can use this this for this project. Give us some kind of like a balanced sleeves, maybe you know, a little bit of a uh, a little cinch. So we will keep this. This is good good stuff to keep. So now you have this sort of floppy square. So the next thing you do is here on the corners, you'll notice it goes down to a point and then it comes up. So there are two ways you can do this. If you want to be super fancy, which you don't have to, um, you can go through and using a seam splitter like this, go through and like split it. I'm going to be honest, I don't do that. Um, but this right here, this next step, is what will save you so much heartache. So you can either seam split it, you know, come through and pick out all the seams, or you can just cut along the line. Uh, I suggest picking a side and sticking to it. So in this case, I'm cutting along this side. Then, if I'm feeling frisky, I might come along the other side and just trim off that <clears throat> little bit right there. So 
what you're going to have at the end. And just chuck that away. Something that looks like this. You're saying, but Ashley, but Lady Towers, <laughs> there's a big hole, big square. And I'll show you after I do the other three, how we gonna, we're going to deal with this. All right. See you back here in a few minutes.